Hey guys, uh, happy 4th of July. It's about 9 a.m. on uh, the 4th of July here. Uh, just had some breakfast with Jennifer and I actually just started the upload for the video that I filmed yesterday on the 3rd for my barbecue prep. Decided to go with a vlog style and I'm breaking it up between uh, two days. Um, maybe down the road I'll re-edit some of it to be quicker cook nook style videos but absolutely no promises on that whatsoever. Um, rocking some nice hair this morning. Definitely need a shave. I will for sure be cleaning myself up before the party this afternoon. However, uh, right now it's time to get down to work, so I'm not too worried about being pretty. And uh, had a very productive day yesterday. However, I didn't quite get everything on my list done, and uh, there's a lot left, so it's going to be busy today, but fun. Um, the things I had underlined in red were the things I was trying to do yesterday. Uh, the things that I circled, I still I didn't get done. Uh, so I, I didn't do the dips for the wings and I didn't doctor up the sauce for the ribs and I squeezed my limes but I didn't actually make the limeade. So today I've got to do those sauces, I've got to make the cornbread uh, and I've got to get the wings, chicken and lamb uh, smoked in advance of the party so all I have to do is reheat them when people are here uh, that it's actually sort of a, a ideal way to serve that stuff anyway um, and I'll mix the margaritas in advance too so that is the plan I think I'm gonna get working on some of the sauces first and then the cornbread or something like that we'll see alright so I just did a little reverse engineering planning this is the <laughs> the most detailed list you're ever going to get out of me. Um, but people are coming over at 4 and I want to be done at 3.30 so I can jump in the shower. So I want to put my wings on the grill that I'm going to sear them on around 2 o'clock uh, so that I can smoke them and have them done before 3.30. Uh, which means I want to have the lamb on at about 1.45 uh, so that can be cooking while I'm searing the wings. I don't have to worry about it. The the chicken thighs, the lamb, and the wings are all pretty quick smokes um, in hour plus or minus 15 minutes for all of them, just kind of depending. Um, so if I get the chicken thighs on at 1230, I can pull them off around 130 before the lamb goes on. And that means I need to get my coal started around 1145. Uh, and it's already 9 o'clock now, so I think what I need to do is get my cornbread going, and then I can work on my sauces and limeade while the cornbread is baking. All right, so I'm working on getting my first batch of cornbread ready. I'm gonna do uh, at least two, maybe three batches, actually. This is Alton Brown's recipe that you do in a cast iron skillet. I only have one skillet. I realized I could probably cook this in a different vessel, but I love how it comes out in the skillet, so I'm just gonna do it a couple times. It's pretty simple. Uh, I've already mixed my dry ingredients. This is two cups of cornmeal, one teaspoon of salt, Alton calls for one tablespoon of sugar, but I put in four. I did this over the weekend, and it wasn't very sweet, and I had even added three tablespoons over the weekend, but I had one more. Uh, two teaspoons baking powder, and one half teaspoon baking soda. Dry ingredients. For the wet ingredients, I have one cup of buttermilk and two eggs that uh, I'm just whisking together to make sure the eggs get blended before I add the sweet cream corn. And Alton calls for one cup of creamed corn. Uh, I found out that this can is just over one cup when I did it over the weekend. I added a whole can over the weekend and it really seemed like it could use even more creamed corn. So I'm going to add two whole cans this time, which is going to be more than double the creamed corn allotment that Alton calls for. And this is going to add a lot of moistness and a little texture from the corn and some additional sweetness. And I still don't think it's going to be overpoweringly sweet. Uh, which is why we've got the honey butter to go with it, but this should be good. Uh, so, two cans of cream corn, and then I'll just blend this together, and then I'll pour the dry ingredients into the wet ones. And they, all the cornbread recipes I looked at made a big, big deal about not over mixing. Uh, you know, you don't want the cornmeal to get blended down too much. You still want the cornbread to have that texture to it. So. You just want to mix the dry into the wet uh, enough that they combine. Alright, so now I'm over by my stove. I'm going to blend the dry ingredients into the wet. Like I said, I'm going to try not to overmix. 
And then the uh, this cast iron skillet is actually already in the oven and it's getting hot. So that when I pour this batter into the skillet, it's going to sizzle a bit and we're going to get a nice crust around the outside before the rest of it bakes through. Uh, so that's sort of the fun part of this process, if you ask me. Nothing like sizzle. Really anything, but especially sweet corn. Come on. All right, so I think that that's all we want to do. Don't overmix. Um, get this out of the way. Let's hope my skillet got hot. Don't forget to use your oven mitt. Uh, so I have two tablespoons of canola oil. Just gonna swirl around in there. Hmm. You know, it looks like the skillet could be a little hotter. I'm just gonna go with it. Yeah, it didn't sizzle like it did last time. I'm gonna see how this one turns out. Um, I didn't. I only had the skillet in there for a few minutes. Hmm. All that filled up. It cooked a bit. I was worried about it getting too hot. All right, so that's going to go for about 20 minutes. I, my crust was a little crustier than I wanted it last time, but I thought that was because of the way I heated and reheated with a bunch of things in the oven, and I had it on the bottom rack for a while. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Maybe the next one will sizzle more. So while the cornbread is cooking, I'm working on the limeade for the margaritas a little bit, and I have to give uh, props to our good family friend Jim for this margarita recipe. Uh, I believe he got this from one of our favorite Mexican restaurants, but this is the Jim Margarita. Uh, the top here is the limeade, so he says four limes get you about four ounces of lime juice, add three quarters of a cup sugar, fill to one quarter of water, and that's your limeade. So, um, and then from there, the, the margarita is one part tequila, one part, he's got Gran Torres there, you can use Contro, uh, any kind of orange liqueur, you can use the Patron orange liqueur. Uh, some people would use Grand Marnier. That's a little syrupy. Uh, you can certainly use it in a pinch. Not my favorite, but one part tequila, one part orange liqueur, and then two parts limeade. So half limeade, half booze of the booze, half tequila, half orange. Um, Jim taught us to use Patron Añejo tequila. It's uh, you know, it's like a fifty dollar tequila, but it's um, it's just exceptional. It's very very smooth. It's a dark one. It's got a rich flavor. Uh, it's not too sweet, but it's got some sweetness to it. Um, it's fantastic. Can't make a bad margarita with it. But really, the, 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 the big secret to these margaritas is making the homemade limeade. Um, don't, instead of using some store bar margarita mix, if you just make some fresh limeade, uh, any kind of tequila and orange liqueur you throw in there is going to be good. So, you know, all, not all limes are made the same. Some are more tart or whatever. Um, so I just did... I did one batch of this limeade to see how it turns out. So I added my four ounces of lime juice, three quarters of a cup of sugar, filled it up to one quarter of water, stirred it up. Now I'm actually having a little fun and I'm gonna do a, a taste test between, this is the store-bought limeade, simply limeade. I'm not sure if this is better than margarita mix, you know, so I wanted to try it. And this is what I just made. I'm gonna give another stir. Um, so let's try them. This I had yesterday in a cocktail. It wasn't bad. You know, it's not bad, but it's got, I don't know how to describe it. The tartness, it's, it's almost like it's lemonade. Uh, I mean, it's fresh, but here's the, this is the one I made. Mm. This is, it's so much, I don't know if it's just because there's more sugar in this. I don't think that's it. There's definitely sugar in both of them, but this is just so much smoother. I think it's just the difference between freshly squeezed, squeezed limes and not. You know, I'm not sure. It's pretty good. I think I'm actually going to add more lime juice to this, maybe another ounce or two. And it should be pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I've got one quart there. I've got room for five quarts here, so I'm going to try and whip all this up. I think with the limes I have today, I'm going to end up doing about between five and six ounces of lime juice to three quarters of a cup of sugar and then balance it out, fill it to a, a quart total liquid with water. I forgot to mention uh, super fine sugar is, uh, 
exactly what it sounds like. It's sugar that where the granules are very small, which makes it dissolve uh, more easily in liquid. Uh, so I highly recommend that. And uh, this is my second batch now. I'm actually doing more like six or even seven ounces of lime juice, lime juice per quart. There's Jennifer. Okay, my 20 minute timer just went off, but the cornbread is still quite um, liquid in the center, so it's going to need at least another five minutes. The test is when you can push on the top and it bounces back a little. All right, so that was actually a full 10 minutes longer uh, for a total cook time of 30 minutes. And it's still just a little spongy, but it is, you know, right here it's spongy, here it bounces a bit. Uh, I am going to let these cool and then put them back in the oven before I serve them at the party, so I don't mind if it's slightly under. And over here I'm wrapping up the limeade. This is actually four quarts, not five. Um, and I ended up using almost double the amount of lime juice called for here. Uh, I don't know if that's just what my palate is in the mood for today or if maybe my limes weren't very limey. But, uh, you know, I always recommend tasting and adjusting. Tasting and adjusting a recipe is just a starting point. I'm sort of in love with how this limeade is tasting right now. I think we're going to have some good margaritas. So I actually have almost three cups of lime juice left over that I'm just going to hold back. Uh, in case somebody wants a sugar-free margarita, we can whip something up with that. Well, I guess it wasn't quite done. <laughs> now, I didn't do this before where I tried to flip it out of the pan to let it cool because I wanted to reuse this pan. When I did, the bottom stayed in the pan. And it wasn't because it was stuck to the bottom of the pan, it was because it was still uh, sort of mushy down there and we want it to be crustier. Oh, you know what, it's also, it's because my pan wasn't, ah, it's just because the pan wasn't hot enough to start, so I didn't get, all right, yeah. See, I thought I had it a little too hot the first time. Hmm, this is more precise than I thought. Uh, we're going to try this again. So I finally figured out that the reason why my pan didn't get hot enough and it took so long to cook is because I had the oven at the wrong temperature. In my mind, I was sure that I had cooked at 350 over the weekend, but uh, turns out I was supposed to be 425. It's off by a little bit. So um, that's too bad, but we're going to try again. I'm at 425 this time. Uh, my skillet should be nice and hot, and um, hopefully we'll get that nice sizzle this time. Pan. Oil. Yeah, I can see how it slides around the pan that it's hotter this time. You guys may you remember, I looked at it and said, oh, it's not hot enough, eh, what the hell, I'll just go with it. That was my mistake. Hmm. That still didn't sizzle as much as I thought it would, but I got some sizzle that time. There's a, went, definitely went And now we're really gonna cook at 425, so, here we go. So while my second try at the cornbread is cooking, I'm going to work on doctoring up my barbecue sauce. Um, this was the pot of mild that I made, and I portioned it out into these three containers. And I'm going to add some raspberry to one, some honey to another, and some bourbon to the third one. This is the same raspberry spread that I used in the sauce. Um, and you know, when I was playing around with this over the weekend, I was surprised how little of the flavoring ingredient I had to add. When I added just like a tablespoon to uh, an amount of sauce that was less than this, but still it wasn't, you know, just a tablespoon. It like completely overpowered it. So I'm going to go little by little. All right. So, well, I guess I'll start with the bourbon. So this is the bullet bourbon that I picked up at Dominic's the other day. Uh, it's a nice bourbon. Jack Daniels would be just fine for this. And I just, you know, I just put in the enough to cover my teaspoon there. I'm gonna mix this as thoroughly as I can. Oh, yeah, you know, you definitely get the bourbon. Hmm. So, this is supposed to be my sweet sauce. It ended up a little spicier than I thought it would do. Had a lot of dried chilies in there. Um, although the, the raspberry and the honey are going to get sweeter, so I'm okay with my bourbon one. It's still a bit spicy. Alright, so I added just the, the second teaspoon, if that, and now we'll see how we're doing.
It's pretty good. Alright, now let's do the honey. <laughs> Got some butter left on the honey cap from the honey butter yesterday. Nice work. There we go. Mmm, honey, still spicy. Oh, there we go. I think that's a winner. Mmm, nice. Now, mmm, mmm, yeah, just a little bit of spice to keep it interesting, but the honey definitely dominates the palate. Uh, okay, time for raspberry. I just think raspberry barbecue sauce is a great idea. I don't know why. Um, it's just what I think. So I'm gonna put a nice heaping teaspoon in there, a tablespoon, whatever the heck this is. So I just decided if one of these sauces gets popular, this isn't nearly enough. So I'm thawing from the freezer another I had a bottle this bottle the size of this one with more of the mild in there so I'm thawing that out so I can add it to these and also use some to, to sauce the, the meat while I'm grilling it if I so choose but still gonna see how we're doing with this stock during the process oh yeah nice raspberry mm, that's yummy that's really yummy so here we are after 20 minutes at 425, definitely <laughs> cooking faster, nice and golden brown, but it's still uh, not springing back to the touch at all, so a couple more minutes. I gave it three extra minutes, 23 minutes total, and I think we're in good shape this time. You can see it's much more browned around the edges, which is going to help me get it out of that pan, but I'm going to let it cool for a little bit first. All right, so I just got my charcoal started up. It's just after 11.30, and uh, these are the chicken thighs, which is the first thing I'm gonna smoke today. Um, you know, I wanted to just get a big package at Costco and have them be nice and cheap, but I went to Costco before they were open yesterday, so I just went to Whole Foods, which is right next door, and I picked these up, uh, which will be awesome, I am sure. So, got a whole bunch of chicken thighs. Gonna uh, clean these up a little bit, and then we will oil and rub them. And that's what we were looking for. <laughs> Let this cool for about 20 minutes and uh, flipped it over and it came right out. Uh, so time to move on to cornbread number two. All right, here we go, one more time. That's a nice sizzle. That's what I wanted to hear. Alright, so here I've got a little station where I'm trimming up my chicken thighs. Uh, these chicken thighs are nice pieces of meat. They're, you know, there's just the one bone. They're very meaty uh, and they come out juicy. And, you know, they're obviously healthier with the skin off, but when you're going to smoke them, it's nice to have the skin on. But there's usually a lot of pieces you have to trim off, otherwise, you end up with way too much skin. Uh, so, you know, just trying to trim it up. That's a good one. Now I was thinking I might rinse these off, but they look, it doesn't look like they need to be rinsed. That's just one more step. I'd have to dry them. Um, now I was watching this barbecue pitmasters where they follow the, the competition barbecue circuit around and the judges on that are sticklers for the chicken thighs being like all the same and symmetrical. Uh, so they really take care to trim them all into exactly the same shape and the one guy even cooks them in muffin tins so that they come out at, at these little balls. <laughs> They're all the same. Uh, and it, they, they look real nice actually, but I couldn't find any muffin tins, any foil muffin tins that were big enough to fit these chicken thighs in. Otherwise I'd be trying that. I don't want to use our inside muffin pans for that. Anyway, the my charcoal is getting hot right now. I'm going to get these trimmed, oil and rub, 
I think I'm going to experiment a little with the rub on this stuff. I already did a couple practice runs and I just used my Uncle Jack's stock rub, but I want to go with maybe a slightly different flavor profile with these just to mix it up. Might use some of that Lowry's roasted garlic salt, uh, which looks really good. Sometimes there's skin that's folded all the way across the bottom there, and you don't want this thing wrapped in skin. Skin on the top is fine, but not all the way across. All right, so same deal as yesterday. I got my coals uh, ready to go. Got a fresh water pan in my cooking chamber. Got my thermometer probe I all can do set. that while holding the camera and not burning myself. Woo, hot in there. All right, so that'll help me get up to temperature. I'll probably have to add a few more coals, we'll see. I'm gonna have some fun with the seasonings on the chicken. Uh, I'm gonna do Let's see, I'll take three tablespoons of my pre-mixed rub. And then I'm gonna add probably two tablespoons of this Lowry's roasted garlic salt. Uh, it just smells awesome and like it would go very happily with chicken. And I've also got this ground white pepper. Uh, I'm going to add a goodly amount of that, maybe a whole tablespoon. M not quite a whole tablespoon. And I'm going to add some additional cumin. There's already cumin in the rub, but I'm going to amp it up. A little, about three quarters of a tablespoon there. Uh, so let's see. Now the thing about a, a dry rub like this is tasting it doesn't really tell you much, but you can learn a lot from smelling it. And that smells awesome. And add a little more white pepper. And a little more garlic. Now I don't want it to get too salty, so I'm going to back off the roasted garlic salt. I think it could take even a little more garlic, though. Uh, so I've got just some straight up garlic powder. Sprinkle that in. That's probably not, not more than a teaspoon. Get a proper spoon, I suppose. Mix this up. Mm, it smells pretty good. I think we're going to be happy with that. All right, so now I'm gonna take a few tablespoons of canola oil, get my chicken nice and oiled up, and then uh, I'll sprinkle that rub all over. But this is the easiest way to do this. So we've got that nicely oiled, and now I'm just gonna sprinkle this rub on. And I don't wanna to be too heavy handed with this. The natural flavor of the chicken and from the smoking is going to be delicious on its own. I just want to enhance it with the seasonings, not completely overpower it. So that's a good start. Alright, now I have to confess, like I'm tempted to put more rub on there, but I think this is enough. You know, I obviously don't want it to be under seasoned, but this is going to be plenty of seasoning. I think this chicken's very happy, so I'm going to give this about maybe 15 20 minutes to set in, and then it's going to go on the smoker. The cornbread. Let's see how we're doing. Mm. 
There, you can, oh, now it's springing back. All right, and there it is, looking very nice. And yes, I had already washed my hands before I was poking the top of the cornbread. Uh, so I'm gonna let that rest for a while and uh, go, actually, I don't even have to go outside to check on my temperature. I can just look at this guy. 142, okay, I just added the coals 10 minutes ago, less than that probably. So uh, still on our way to, wanna see probably 250 when I put the chicken on. All right, it's time to throw these guys on the grill. All right, so there is Just the threw a nice split of peach and cherry. And uh, it's going to be less than an hour for the chicken, I think. Um, you know, I want to, I am going to finish it in an oven later uh, and try and crisp up the skin later. And so it's okay, you know, it's going to cook a little more, but I still want to make sure I cook it through. Uh, the last thing you want to do is serve raw chicken, but still probably 45, 50 minutes is all it's going to take for those little guys. Cornbread number two, also a success. Well, cornbread number three, but number two that we're keeping. I think I'm gonna do one more. No, this is not deja vu. This is the fourth time today I am doing this. <laughs> uh, I think we've got, it looks like it's gonna be nice and hot this time. Let's see. Good sizzle. So here are my gorgeous French racks of lamb from Lobel's in New York. Uh, these are a bit pricey, but they're totally worth it. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece of meat. Uh, so I'm going to open these up um, and then do the same deal as with all the other meat, oil and rub. All right, so I had to do a few rotations, but after about an hour, 15 minutes, and a couple checks and moving from the hot end to the cool end, got, uh, you know, I'm testing several of these. They're all coming out at around 160, 165, so that's uh, perfection. So there is a very nice looking pan of chicken, if I do say so myself. Now, the thing is, I'm not gonna serve this for several hours, and if you're gonna be holding food, you either need to keep it hot, or you gotta get it cold. You can't let it be at room temperature. That's dangerous. So while this chicken is still hot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it into this uh, little cooler that I've lined with foil to make a faux cambro. <laughs> Uh, which will keep the chicken, I think, uh, you know, at a nice temperature. So there's the chicken in my cooler or faux cambro, and now I'm gonna just fold this foil in and keep it nice and hot. All right, so there's my chicken. I put this nice big fat Martha Stewart book on top to keep it nice and close tight, so it should, um, you know, stay. Chicken should probably still be at 140 when I uh, go to serve it, um, but then I'm gonna finish it in an oven, pretty hot oven. I'm gonna put just a little slab of butter on top of each one. It'll help crisp the skin up and uh, that should be pretty good. Meanwhile, here are my racks of lamb and I'm just gonna rub them up with some canola oil and then sprinkle some of that same rub on there. Not gonna doctor it up this time. Uh, it works perfectly just as is and then these will go on the smoker next. So there's the lamb nicely oiled and rubbed and I'll let that sit for about 15 minutes before I throw it on the grill. So I got these wings at Whole Foods, same as the thighs and now it's time to get these dressed up. All right, so I've got about 40 wings there in my bowl and I just oiled them up with canola oil and I uh, whipped up a little rub to put on there. Um, didn't use any of the this pre-made Uncle Jack's rub this time. Uh, trying to mix it up, so I've got two tablespoons of Jamaican jerk in there and about two tablespoons of this roasted garlic salt and a little dash of cumin and about a tablespoon of ground white pepper and a little dash of garlic powder, and about a tablespoon of Hungarian sweet paprika. And it smells really good. I think that's gonna be a nice rub for these wings. And there are the wings nicely rubbed. So what I'm gonna do with these is sear them on the hot grill and then put them on the smoker. But first I'm gonna get my lamb on the smoker and give it a little head start. And there is the lamb. So I've been working on a dipping sauce for the wings and uh, I started with 16 ounces of sour cream and to that I added some of the same spices that went on the chicken wings, um, Jamaican jerk seasoning, uh, Hungarian sweet paprika, the Lowry's roasted garlic salt, a little regular garlic powder, powder, little cumin, little chili sauce, little chili powder, some of the white pepper, and also a tablespoon or two of my honey barbecue sauce, and it is uh, tasting pretty good. I think I forgot to mention I also added some of this Howler Monkey Tabasco sauce. All right, so it's about 2.45 and uh, I'm not too far behind. I just realized that with all the lamb on the smoker, I'm not going to be able to fit the wings on there. So now I've 
got a new plan. Instead of trying to get everything done and then taking a shower while the lamb is going, I'm going to go shower now and then I'll be able to do the wings and they'll come off hopefully right around when people are arriving. So uh, not too bad. Only one major mistake so far. Let's hope it stays that way. <laughs> All right, now it's uh, just after three o'clock. I uh, got myself cleaned up. Lamb is coming along nicely and we're in good shape. Here we have these beautiful racks of lamb fresh off the smoker. Uh, you know, this you want to serve medium rare, so I tried to pull it off around 125, 130 internal temperature. And uh, now I'm gonna put this in another uh, faux Cambro to keep it warm. So there's my little pile of lamb. I thought that was sort of cute. It's kind of like a fort. All right, so now it's time to sear off these chicken wings. So this is the pan they're going to go in. Going to oil my grill. Got my tongs. Checking on the smoker that they're going to go on uh, once they're seared. Got my grill preheated. Uh, so let's get the show on the road. All right, so a couple minutes aside, and we'll get a nice sear on these suckers. I wish you guys could smell how great this smells right now. It's uh, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> wings are uh, searing up nicely. I'm about halfway through now. You now obviously some parts of the grill are hotter than others, so these are the ones that were on the hot spot. They got done sooner. The other ones I just kind of keep rotating. Uh, got them all in a good spot right now, so I close the lid for about 30 seconds, uh, and we'll be done here in about two minutes, I think. The flare-ups from the chicken fat dripping down actually help get the sear going, so this is just beautiful. Kind of just a few left. Alright, so I dumped all those wings out on my smoker and now I'm going to do them slow with and smoky for, I don't know, half an hour or something. Alright, so once you've got your limeade mixed, making the margarita is pretty easy. I've got uh, six cups of the limeade in here and it's uh, two parts limeade to one part tequila to one part contro. I think I mentioned I've got this Patron Añejo mar or tequila that's just, just really, really good. Uh, so, six cups of limeade, three cups of tequila, three cups of contro, mix it up, and we're in business. I actually ended up doing only three parts tequila to two parts contro. Uh, I sort of lost count of my contro and tasted it that way, and uh, we like it better, so that is what I'm doing. So I think I neglected to mention you want to serve this on the rocks, um, since we're not shaking it with ice. Uh, when you mix it that way, you want to serve it on the rocks, garnish with a lime, uh, salt is optional. I prefer no salt. Um, here's the bar. Party is actually underway. I found a brief moment of quiet here by the bar to show you how to pour this thing. Hey guys, so it's actually Monday morning right now and it's taken me this long to uh, find the time to sit down and do a little post-mortem wrap-up on how the 4th of July barbecue went. Um, you know, unfortunately, I got a little distracted like a half hour before the party and then through the party, uh, you know, making merry with people and uh, trying to get all the food uh, heated and plated properly, so I sort of forgot or didn't have the time to get very much fooded, much footage of the food presentation, uh, so I regret that because um, it was kind of pretty when I was cutting it. Uh, but uh, I think maybe I can steal a couple frames from Jen or her brother was taking some pictures, so I'm going to try to edit those into the video, but in any case, I just wanted to give you a little, um, you know, of my perspective on how everything went. So let's see, uh, see if I can remember all the things that I made. Um, I'll go in order of how we serve them. Uh, the wings came out really great. Those were sort of like my last afterthought, um, and I hadn't practiced those at all, but the wings came out awesome. Um, yeah, I used a combination of like jerk seasoning and that Lowry's roasted garlic salt and some other stuff, and I seared them on a really hot grill and then smoked them for about 40, 50 minutes, and uh, <clears throat> they just came out great. Um, it was my... Grandma and my dad were both saying they were the best wings they ever had. Uh, nice flavor, not too spicy. Um, I served that sour cream dipping sauce with all sorts of stuff in it that was pretty good. Um, the only thing about the wings is, you know, I served the whole wing, so there's like the little drumette, like the little two bone wing thing, and then the little wing tip. Um, they're sort of hard to eat in a party setting. 
like I was watching barbecue pit boys and they were like adamant about not cutting off the wing tips and serving them whole. And I know my uncle, uh, my uncle Jack, the chef, uh, he, he served them the same way. But, you know, they're easier to eat when you get them like the way you do at Buffalo Wild Wings or a usual wing place where they chop the tips off and then they separate the little drumette from the wing thing. So there's those two different kinds of wings. So I think in the future I'd probably do that. But other than that, the wings were fantastic. Um, the cornbread was a really big hit. Uh, our friends Nick and Rachel, who participated in my test kitchen the weekend before, uh, really, and they liked the cornbread last week, but they were like over the moon about it this week. I added the extra can of creamed corn, and I did four tablespoons of sugar instead of three, um, which is a quarter cup. And uh, that gave it a very nice, you know, much, much more moisture in the bread. And then the honey butter, the honey butter was a big hit along with the bread. Uh, I mean, that was sort of like a dessert item, but uh, it was very, very good. Uh, the baby back ribs um, came out fantastic. I got these ribs at Dominic's, the Safeway brand, and they're, they're the biggest, fattest ribs I've ever seen in my life. I think I tried to point that out, how big the point was in the middle of the rack, and it was just all meat. Uh, they were very good, had a nice smoke ring. You know, in the past, I finished them on a grill put sauce them and then got it all bubbly and charred on a grill, which is nice, but we figured out they come out juicier if you just do it in the oven. So, you know, I just had them in a, you know, 375 degree oven for 15 minutes or something to get them back up to temperature. And uh, those went over very well. Uh, the lamb also came out fantastic. Um, you know, I did six racks. There were one or two where the edges were just a little medium instead of medium rare, but you know, what you gonna do? Uh, overall, the, the doneness was very good. And the way I finished the lamb, hot is, oven, I had it up at the top of like a 400 degree oven, so it's uh, close to the, the heat because there's a nice uh, fat back on the lamb and you want to get that like rendered as much as possible. And, uh, you know, just like 10 minutes in there after the lamb had been hanging out my faux cambro for a while. Uh, so the lamb came out great. The sauces and the relish uh, were good. Uh, the bourbon barbecue sauce was the favorite barbecue sauce. I was surprised about that, actually, because I put a ton of bourbon in by the time I was done. I don't think I had all that on camera. I think I started with just a couple tablespoons, but by the end, it really tasted like bourbon, and uh, there was none of that left when, when we were done, so that was cool. And, you know, the chicken thighs came out pretty good, too. My mom really loved them, so that was a good thing. Uh, the chicken thighs, I heated up out on my grill, on the gas grill because I didn't have any more room in the ovens and I just had them in a big foil pan and I just turned my grill up and got it to like 400 degrees inside the grill and I just set them out there and I think I had the, the skin crispy for a minute there but the the chicken heated up much more quickly on the grill than I thought it would so I had to pull it off and so the skin got crispy and then less crispy and maybe they were just like this much overcooked. Uh, I mean, nobody said that, but they could have been juicier. They were just a little dry. Um, but overall, uh, overall, everything came off well. Jennifer's uh, blueberry pies in a jar <laughs> also went over very well. Usually people are pretty full by dessert and they don't eat a lot, but a lot of those pies went uh, really, really delicious uh, and fun. Uh, and, uh, oh, and yeah, a lot of margaritas were consumed as well. Um, I think I showed you the pour of the margarita. Uh, overall, very good party. Great to see all the family and celebrate America's Independence Day. Thanks for watching my 4th of July barbecue prep. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please leave a comment and tell me what you thought. And uh, I hope to be doing some more barbecue cooking videos in the future. Uh, until then, take care.